fellow Toastmasters. And I'm not sure if we have any guests. In 1992, some friends of I and some friends and I decided we wanted to go camping. So we I went to my mom, who's a botanist, and she's done a lot of research, and cacti research in Utah. So she knows Utah pretty well. And I asked her, where is a good place, do you think? What would you suggest? So she suggests that she told us about a place in the West Desert, and it's called Crystal Peak, and it's at the north end of the Wawa Mountain Range, which you get to, um, it's kind of west of Milford, Utah. Yes. So we went out to camp at Crystal Peak. Um, well, she also, she also added, she said, for a day trip, you could do this. Check out this place. It's called Cotwood Wash. And she looked me right in the eye, which isn't like my mom, because she's not very, you know, she's never talked about spiritual beliefs. Or she's very factual minded. But she looked me right in the eye, and she goes, this place is really spooky. So I thought, OK, you know, OK, sounds fine. So we went <laughs> we camped at Crystal Peak. And for the day trip, we drove down. You take a dirt road south, and you, you cross uh, State Road 21, which goes west from Milford, and it kind of, then it starts angling up and goes to, to Nevada. This is actually kind of a picture, so this is kind of the train we're talking about. It's not a very big picture, but it's just long, called the loneliest highway in Utah. So you drop, you go on 21, and then you drop down, you go south on a little dirt uh, road, and it goes about a mile, and crosses a wash. It's a pretty wide, sandy wash at this point. And so, we, but she said there's also another place you can go before you get down, drop into the wash, you can cut off, and it's a smaller, it's a two-track dirt road. She said that's probably better because you go up more along the rim of this wash, it's kind of a narrow canyon wash, and you can drop down in. Well, we kind of missed that road. So we, we just went down and we parked down in the wash. Um, and decided to hike up, you know, we, we go at it from the bottom. We hiked up, and uh, it was really interesting because it's very sandy. Along the sides, there's a lot of black boulders with a lot of, we saw a lot of Native American rock art. There were spirals and interesting stuff. And we heard a lot of rattlesnakes. We could hear them rattling on both sides. And we felt like as long as we're in this sandy wash area, we're, you know, we, we're safe because we could see them come out, but we we're looking at each other like, is this a warning, you know? This is really strange. But so it narrows down to a slot canyon. We walk in and the, um, the sides, you know, it's, it's, at this point, it's probably like 10 feet wide. It's like a narrow and it's rocky cliffs. And it's pretty cool, you know? We could see there was rock art and you walk up and uh, it kind of opens up. There's boulders and it's pretty cool. So we thought that was really neat. We went to leave, walk back out, and the, the truck that we were driving was st got stuck in the sand. It took us hours to get it out. So that was our we got it out. That was our first adventure. So later, um, another group of friends of I and I decided to go camping again and go down to Cotton Wash again. This time it was my daughter, she's 16 at the time, Ariana, my boyfriend at the time, Cliff, and another, my friend Patty Ann and her boyfriend. So this time we did go on the top along the, the ridge, drive down in, hike down in, and it's pretty cool. We're walking down and just talking and everything, and uh, suddenly in front of me, a uh, great horned owl flushes out, just like scared us because it's like right there. Just we didn't even see him. He just like whoosh and flew up, and then two feathers dropped at my feet. I thought, wow, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> two feathers, two eagle, eagle. Sorry, I keep saying it was owl. Two owl feathers dropped at my feet. So I picked him up. So that's kind of a gift. We hike out on this two-track road. And I just had a small, it was like a silver Subaru. We're just driving along, and it's pretty, we're going pretty slow, because this is just a two-track dirt road with some weeds down the center. And Corey looks out, he just kind of looks out, and he goes, oh my god, the car's on fire. So, 
We look out back and sure enough, the back of the car is on fire. Well, we have a freak out moment, like, oh, it's gonna blow up like you see in the movies. But we all just dive out, Cliff stops the car, we dive out, but, you know, we didn't grab anything. And uh, the car proceeds to burn up, right? Burn up our <laughs> didn't grab anything. Um, and we were just like, okay, great, what do we do now? Corey volunteered to walk out to the highway to see if he could flag down the car and get some help. So he leaves, and, and about an hour later, he comes back. He had gone up, he's gotten a ride, and he'd gone up to the next little town, which is Garrison, Utah, almost on the Nevada border. Well, along comes the fire truck and two pickup loads of people in the back. We come to see the show, the car that burned up. <laughs> because this is not, you know, so this is great event, this little boarding town, nothing much going on. But by that time, the car was smoldering, you know, it was almost done burning up. They doused it with their truck. And the only thing that was left, really, everything, it just, it was so hot. There was the metal left. Everything was just no dash, anything. It was just completely hot fire. Um, kind of interesting, because that we had the cooler in the back of the car, and it it had it was all gone, it had melted away, but we had a, a, cat, a carton of orange juice, so there, that was still there, because where the liquid level, it just put down and so it was sitting there. <laughs> anyway, they, they gave us a ride to town. Um, so later, like, I think we did go back one more time, uh, some friends, uh, some family, and that time our adventure, that time I went with my mom and some of her friends, and he actually decided, her friend, he, I remember talking about this, but he decided on his own that he wasn't going to take any chances, and he, he did a corn offering, corn drink, you know, before we walked out of there. And that was fine, except that was Memorial Weekend, and we got snowed on. We woke up in the night, and the tent had completely collapsed on us, so that was interesting. My friend Sharon, who'd gone with us the first time, she went one time and came back. She said, I'm never going there again. And I was like, what happened? She wouldn't tell me. So I'm just never going there again. I did go later in 2006. My then husband at the time, Native American. It was very strange because at that time the whole thing was covered with spider webs, like huge spider webs. I never really felt scared there, but just a very strange place. He was scared though. I'd never seen him. He was scared. And so this morning I just thought I would Google it because I, I hadn't really anticipated talking about this. I had something else in mind, but I couldn't get that together. So I went to Google it and actually. Cottonwood Wash, which is south of the highway, even on Google Maps, it showed it as being north of the highway, not even the same location, so it's still a mysterious place. <laughs> and that's...